Hey everyone, I got a, another book. It's really good. It's um, Quick Answers to Tough Questions um, by Answers in Genesis. And it's not really a, um, it's, it's a pretty simple read. Um, something you can give your kids, but adults can learn from it too. It's um, really good stuff. <clears throat> I would highly recommend it. Quick Answers to Tough Questions within... Uh, the creation, creationism um, versus uh, Darwinian evolution debate, um, but that's not what I wanted to um, talk about. I wanted to first play this um, this clip. It's five minutes um, in reference to the um, this past uh, Super Bowl. Um, did the Super Bowl empower women? This is from uh, Freedom Project, and here we go. Well, halftime sex show. Some say it was empowering to women. Really? I saw comments from grandmothers saying how embarrassed they were watching it with their grandchildren. It was raunchy and blatantly sexual, but many also feel it was degrading to women. Hashtag me too. But was it all that surprising, considering it was J-Lo and Shakira? I'm David Fiorazzo, and this is Christ and Culture. It was a predictable display of godless entertainment that brought high praise from elites like Lady Gaga, Kim Kardashian West, Ryan Seacrest, Olivia Munn, Keith Urban, and many others who most likely are completely out of touch with family values. In case you missed it, the halftime show included a stage full of scantily clad women dancing suggestively, nonstop sexuality on display, hip thrusting, booty shaking, tongue wagging, crotch grabbing, I'm not even exaggerating, and Jennifer Lopez stripping and showing young girls how to pole dance, basically. Sex sells, but have Americans become hopelessly desensitized? The problem is... We keep putting up with it. For those who suggest that seeing older women dance like that was encouraging, I get it, but you're missing the point big time. I don't need to tell you how much power music, media, and celebrities have on children and young people. So why discuss this? Because every year, millions watch, and that includes impressionable children. Think about it. What messages did this hypersexualized show send? And also, isn't it interesting, they decry treating women as sex objects and then turn around and produce a show having women using sexuality to perform. The hypocrisy is astounding. By saying this performance by Jennifer Lopez and Shakira was either offensive, disgusting, disappointing, some claim we're just judging unbelievers who need to hear the gospel of forgiveness. Observations and opinions are not condemnations. Now, Franklin Graham posted on Facebook that he doesn't expect an unbelieving world to act like Christians. He said this, This exhibition was Pepsi showing young girls that sexual exploitation of women is okay. With the exploitation of women on the rise worldwide, instead of lowering the standard, we as a society should be raising it. I'm disappointed in Pepsi and the NFL. And I would add disappointment in the Fox television network. And by the way, did you notice the young women dancing along with J-Lo and Shakira, the stars of the halftime show? Now, a year ago, I reported on how this affects girls. From beauty pageants to dance competitions, coaches and irresponsible parents are dressing children like prostitutes and teaching them sexualized routines, well, just like we saw on Super Bowl Sunday. Okay, check out this unbelievable clip of eight-year-old girls dancing to a cheering audience. <laughs> Are you beginning to see part of the problem here? One mom warned that J-Lo and Shakira send a dangerous message, adding, quote, mm -hmm. working firsthand with several sex trafficking victims, 
I can tell you these displays only feed the cycle. Not to mention that this was soft porn on national TV. Now, a Christian mom said she was witnessing a pagan ritual from Old Testament times, while others noticed occult themes or symbols. And do you really think it's that big of a stretch to mention the connection between the sexualization of today's young people, entertainment, pornography, the sex trafficking industry, and abortion? Bingo! There's a brand new documentary out called Blind Eyes Opened that not only demonstrates the epidemic of sex trafficking in the United States, but makes a clear case for the fact the abortion industry enables trafficking to thrive. So let's wrap this up. In an excellent article for Faith Wire, Dan Andros states, quote, For a group of people who always trumpet the value of, quote, safe spaces, they certainly don't seem to care about the consequences of jamming sexually provocative performances into programming that families will be watching. It's funny to me how modern musicians think sensually gyrating, mostly naked on stage, is edgy or cool or powerful. It's none of those things. It is predictable tired, and debasing. Now, I know that people do care. I can see that just from the amount of comments of concerned parents and citizens that still come in, but the problem is our collective silence as Christians in America regarding entertainment. We reap what we sow, and the Bible tells us to love our neighbors enough to engage, to not conform to the ways of this world, and rather than blending in with the darkness, to shine the light of Christ. God bless you and keep speaking the truth about things that matter. Now, the world is going to be the world. Uh, Getting more communist and uh, the the public schools are just, it's an absolute horror show. I don't know how Christian parents could uh, continue to send their kids uh i mean the things that you hear about girls um holding in their pee because they don't want to go into um the bathroom because boys can use girls bathrooms and the lgbt indoctrination um it's just a mess but the world is going to be the world and the disturbing thing is things that i see is Christians, the church, um, are becoming desensitized and are compromising <clears throat> our our morality. We're the world's a mess <clears throat> right now, and um, sin is glorified. It's you know it's a Romans one Isaiah five twenty uh, world, <clears throat> and as that happens, um, there are many people in the church that just um, get so desensitized and hearing so much of it, it's all around us, that we become lackadaisical, we become uh, almost blending in somewhat to the cultural norms. And this is not, this is radically what we are not supposed to do. Um, this is against God's word. This is against scripture. Um, what we, all of us need, need to hear this. Um, what we allow ourselves to watch. Um, it, it's getting more difficult now because, you know, the LGBT agenda is being pushed into practically everything in the media. <clears throat> so, but, you know, the, what we allow ourselves to um, uh, be entertained with as far as the media is concerned. Um, as the church, we can't, we have to really stand guard and um, really do a self check and make sure that we are not um, compromising and living in sin in that type of a way in that type of a context of allowing the world to um, desensitize us um, to sin. So I thought that it would be um, a little helpful for all of us to um, 
go over some things. And it, one of the reasons, I mean, I see Christians on the internet, um, which sometimes really um, bad attitudes, people who are supposedly Christians. And um, I, yeah, I understand we're living in an extremely godless society, post-Christian society, but um, followers of Christ really shouldn't have nasty attitudes the way uh, some of the things that, you know, happens sometimes. Um, I, honestly, one of the main, main reasons it happens is be, people just don't really know the God of the Bible. And um, uh, we have to look at the scriptures to see, you know, how God presents himself in his word. Um, look at his judgments. Um, God, you know, he look at his punishments. God sent um, fiery serpents to... Um, uh, hurt people, punish them for sin. He sent bears at times to kill people. Uh, he sent lions to attack people. Um, the ground opened up and killed people. Uh, disease. God has used disease. Um, look at the judgment in Second Chronicles 21, 18 and 19. It says, <clears throat> The Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable sickness. Now it came about in the course of time, at the end of two years, that his bowels came out because of his sickness, and he died in great pain. That was God doing that to someone for, as a punishment. Um, Jesus warned about a woman <clears throat> in the early church who was sinning and causing others to sin, that he would put her on a bed of sickness and kill her children unless she repents in Revelation 2. Um, to the church of Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2, verse 2 to 5, Jesus said, I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men, and you put to, to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you found them to be false, and you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake, and have not grown weary, but I have this against you that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember where you have fallen and repent and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. First Peter um, <clears throat> one sixteen. God said, you shall be holy for I am holy. We sometimes forget a lot of that, and we live uh, taking God's uh, grace uh, for granted, which is forbidden by the scriptures. And uh, one of the problems is, is people just Christian, many, many Christians don't really, they don't read their Bibles. They don't study their Bibles, not serious study. Um and we have to remember these things because we live in a extremely anti-Christian um, culture. It's extremely hostile to the gospel, um, to God's word. We have to remember things like First Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter five, verse twenty-two, where it says, "Abstain from every form of evil." James chapter 1 verses um, 23 to 24, it says, If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. First John uh, 1 John 1.6 says, If we say that we have fellowship with him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Chapter 2, verse 4, The one who says, I have come to know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Verse 6, The one who says he abides in him ought, to, ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Verse 15, 15 to 16, do not love the world, nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. 
I mean, what a horrible thing it would be <clears throat> to be condemned by the words of Jesus in Matthew 7.23. I'm sorry, Matthew 23.28, where Jesus said, <clears throat> So you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Did you, did you, did you hear that? Jesus said, so you two outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Now, Matthew 12, 25 says, Jesus knew their thoughts. God knows what we think. He judges us, um, our intentions. That's why we really have to seriously take the scriptures seriously. <clears throat> Second Corinthians Chapter 13, verse 5 says, Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test? We have... Um, look what Jesus said. In Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Um, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Um, we have to, you know, that was Jesus' words. We have to um, worship God for, for who God really is. Um the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, A jealous and avenging God is the Lord. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserves wrath for his enemies. We have to take serious, heed the warnings of Scripture. We have to... Um, really you know, meditate on it day and night. We have to study it. We have to spend more time in it because the world is trying to conform us to what they, um, what they want, um, um, which is, you know, antichrist. And, um, we, as Christians, we are commanded to, um, study the scriptures and let, you know, that, that's part of our sanctification. We're supposed to um, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're supposed to grow in holiness. The Bible is very clear. That's, that's the Christian's duty. And uh, proclaim and defend the gospel. Um, we need to um, be more in God's word. And so we don't become uh, like the world. Because, um, as I said, it's an extremely hostile, um, post-Christian, anti-Christian uh, culture that we're in now. And um, we, need to, we need constant exposure to God's Word. So, I um, hope that this was helpful um, to people. <laughs>